In today's video, I'll be showing you how to enable chat controls in Minecraft for your YouTube streams. If you notice, my two most recent stream is Minecraft but chat controls my game. What this does is allow chat to control my world, like summoning mobs and giving me items and giving me effects. To do this, I used DuckDuck's Twitch Plays script and modified it to allow YouTube to control your Minecraft world. To download the app, you would simply go to the releases and go to YouTube Controls MC Executable app. Here you would download the YouTube Controls MC app.zip file. This should show up in your downloads folder. After that, you would have to unzip the file. After that, you're going to see a few things. We're going to see configs files and the actual application. Before we can actually run this application, we're going to want to change some of these things in these config files. To open these files, you can simply use any text editor like Notepad or for this case, I'll be using Microsoft Visual Studio. Firstly, we're going to want to open the config file. These are the important parts of this application. Firstly, it's the YouTube channel ID. This is your YouTube channel ID. You can get this channel ID by simply going to your YouTube channel, clicking more and go to share channel and copy channel ID. After you copied it, you can simply paste it in, in these quotation marks. Next is your YouTube stream URL. This could be your current live stream or an upcoming live stream. For this example, I have an upcoming live stream that is unlisted to test this. I would simply grab the link from up here and paste it into these quotation marks. After this is the Archon host or remote control host. I recommend using a local server so nobody else can join if for some reason you leak the IP. To get a local Minecraft server on your PC, I recommend going to papermc.io. Here you can download optimized Minecraft servers for your PC so it should not lag as a regular Minecraft server. To download a server, you would simply go to downloads and then click on paper and click build explorer if you want to download any kind of Minecraft server for any version you want to run. Here then you would click download. After downloading your Minecraft server, I recommend creating a new folder for your Minecraft server. In this case, I'll be calling it server. Here you would drag the server file into it. To run this Minecraft server, you're going to need to be able to run jar files. You can do this if you have a little coffee icon. I don't really know what this is actually. I, is, that, is that tea? If nothing shows up, there are plenty of YouTube tutorials on how to set up jar on your PC. After that, you're simply going to double click on the server and wait for some files to generate. After a few seconds, there should be a few files. The two files we mainly care about right now is the eula.txt and the server properties file. Simply go into the eula.txt file and change eula to true. And then press Control S. Next is the server properties file. Again, you can open this with any text editor. I'll be using Microsoft Visual Studio Code. In here, you're going to look for enable archon and change this to true. Then you would want to scroll down until you see archon password and archon port. For the password, you can change it to anything. Right now, I will change it to TMN. And for the port, make sure you remember these numbers. After you set your password and changed it to true, you can press Ctrl S to save. After that, you can go back to your config JSON file. And if you're running a local server, you can keep this as local host and make sure that the Archon port matches the one in your server properties. By default, this should already be 25575, which means you shouldn't need to change this. The Archon password should be the password you set up in your server properties. For me, it was TMN, so I'll do that. Player username is your Minecraft Java username. My Java username is Eric Tiemann, but you would change this to your username, which I don't know what your new username is. Or if you want to change this to all players, you would do at A for all players. After that, you don't have to worry about the message rate, the max queue length, or max workers. The next four are limits for chat. Max items is the amount of items chat can give you. For example, one, they can only give me one diamond. If they try to give me more than one diamond, it will automatically set it back to one. If I want them to be able to give me 30 diamonds, I'll change it to 30. And if they type give diamond 30, it would give me 30 diamonds. Next is max effect duration. This is how long a potion effect will last. Right here is 30 seconds, but you can change it to whatever you want, like 90 seconds or whatever. 
Next is max effect amplifier. This is the level of effect you're gonna get. This is a bit confusing because even though it says three, the limit is actually four because it's added by one. So if you want the limit to be three, you would actually change it to two. Next is max mobs. This is the amount of mobs chat can spawn on you. Right now, if they try to spawn more than one mob on me, it will simply just spawn one mob. If you want chat to spawn multiple mobs, you can change it to any number. For example, I'll change it to five and this will allow chat to spawn five cows on me if they do spawn cow five or summon cow five. After you change your settings to whatever you want to, make sure to press Ctrl S to save. Next is a blacklist file. In here is things chat isn't allowed to spawn, give you, or affect you with. For mobs, these are mobs chat cannot spawn. For example, it's Wither and Ender Dragon. If you want to add another mob chat cannot spawn, you would simply go to the end, add a comma, and add new quotation marks, and add the mob you don't want chat to spawn. For example, I'll add warden so chat cannot spawn the warden. For items, these are items chat cannot give you. For example, there's command block, structure blocks, and repeating command block. If you want to add a blocked item, simply go to the end, again, add a quotation, and add a blocked item. For example, this would be diamond, so they can't give me a diamond. For effects, these are effects chat cannot give you. For right now, it's bad omen, instant damage, blindness, and that's it. If you want to add a new effect, again, simply go to the end, add a comma, and add the effect. For, I'll do weakness for now. After that, make sure to do Control S to save. Lastly is the commands file. What this file does is it allows chat to use custom commands that you set up. By default, the program only allows give commands, summon commands, and effect commands. For example, if chat wants to make a day, they would simply type day in chat, and then it would run this Minecraft command, time set day, and then it would change the time of day in Minecraft. If you want to add a new command, simply go to the end of the previous command, add a comma, press enter, and add new quotations, and name the command whatever you want chat to refer it to. Refer it to. In this example, I'll do custom. After you name it, you're going to go outside the quotation marks, add a colon, and then add another quotation marks, and after that, you add the command you want to give chat. For this example, I'll do give player netherite ingot 69 what this will do is give player which in the config file is whatever your minecraft username is or at a if you set it to at a and then it would give me netherite ingot and then it would give me 69 netherite ingots after that make sure to press Control s to save before we can run the ytcontrolsworld.exe we're gonna have to start our server simply go to your server and simply run the jar file again and wait for it to start. After a while, you s you'll see this UI show up and it will start generating your Minecraft world. After your world has generated, you're going to see Thread Archon Listener started, which means that it's listening for remote control, which means you're in the right direction. Hey, what the f After your server has started, you can now run the YT Controls world. If this window pops up, simply click more info and run anyway it will then open a command prompt and try to connect to your youtube chat and also try to connect to the minecraft server after that you can go to the multiplayer add server if you're doing a local server you would do local host and simply add the server then you can now join the server after you join the server you can now test out your commands here we're gonna do my custom command which we named custom so after we type custom, we should show that we get 69 netherite ingots, and which we did. And that is how to set up custom chat controls for Minecraft for your YouTube live streams. I will be adding a Twitch version in the future, but for now it's only available for YouTube. If you use this program for your live streams, credit is appreciated but is not needed. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe because it really means a lot and see you in my next live stream or YouTube video, I don't really know. If you want my kisses, I'll be your perfect missus till the day that one of us dies.